All right. Good day. Good day to everybody. Good day. My name is Mark Ross, and this will be my first <clears throat> my first video here talking about uh, the issue of mental health. Um, and before I get started with that, uh, I would like for you guys to uh, like and subscribe to this page the Speak Your Truth with Mark Ross podcast page. Uh, please subscribe to this as I will be uh, delivering uh, messages of uh, importance, I guess, and uh, messages of hope and inspiration to others. Uh, the goal for me in doing this is to just bring about uh, more awareness of mental health uh, to be open and transparent uh, about the issues related to mental health as it affects us uh, uh, us as uh, a fam our families and us uh, as a community <clears throat> um, I want to uh, first talk about who am I and um, what my purpose is for doing this video. Uh, as I said earlier, my name is Mark Ross and the purpose for this video, uh, the purpose for this podcast uh, is for me, what led me down this path is uh, first and foremost, I am a Marine Corps veteran. I served four years in the Marines from 1987 to 1991. I got out in September of 91 and I came back home to Milwaukee, Wisconsin, which is where I'm from. Uh, I started going to college at that point and maybe around the, maybe around the spring of 92. Spring of 92 is when I can say that I started to exhibit uh, problems. I started having nightmares more and more often, uh, almost on a daily basis. Most, if not all, of the nightmares that I had were military related. Um, and it always involved me uh, falling from uh, stupid heights man i'm talking like way in the clouds type shit you know what i mean and i'm i'm falling and before i hit the ground i wake up right and and um i i i will wake up sweating screaming you know just it was just out of control man i mean it, it got so bad for me with the nightmares that i was afraid to go to sleep because I just couldn't deal with the day-to-day -day goings on with these nightmares. So, you know, me being a Marine, you know, thinking that I can, you know, just have a couple of drinks and just, uh, you know, get myself relaxed, you know, maybe that'll help, right? So this goes on. I started doing, I was always, I always consider myself a, a heavy drinker because of my time in the service and my exposure to things that uh, helped and shaped that drinking habit. Um, so me drinking more, thinking that it would help my nightmares turn into two problems, right? I'm, I'm drinking more to self-medicate and cope with the nightmares and the nightmares are still happening. So nothing really changed in regards of my nightmares. Uh, but I continued to drink and I, I didn't do well in, in, in college because uh, I didn't sleep much. Uh, my, my mood started to change. Uh, I became more easily agitated um, I became somewhat detached 
from social settings and uh, people. Um, I'm not going to say I became more reclusive, but I became more uh, solo. I, I did a lot of things solo. Um, I, I hung around people when I felt like it. But for the most part, for the most part, guys, I, I spent a lot of time by myself. Uh, <clears throat> I felt safe by myself. Um, I felt like I felt like I can just be myself, and um, and I, I've learned later in life that um, that isolating is was not a good thing for me because it really it, it really spiraled my uh, my my mental health uh, in general. Um, The, the more I embraced that loneliness, I became uh, more detached and my behaviors worsened. And it, it, it led me to uh, thinking about taking my life. Uh, I mean, I was in that thought, I was in that train of thought for a while, you know, wondering why, why I'm still here. Um, and... Sometimes I wished for death, you know, to be quite frank. Uh, so I would drink. I would drink to the point where I didn't want to remember anything. Uh, I drank till I blacked out and I will oftentimes get in the car and drive. Um, I drove my car home plenty of nights not knowing how I got home, I would wake up in my car and I would have no idea. I, I'm, I'm telling you guys, I, I had no idea of how I got home. I would just wake up and there I was at home <laughs> in my car, parked. Uh, I really can't explain it other than God was with me. And I say that now because I, I've, I, I did that quite often uh, back in the day. Uh, I, would, I would drink till I would black out. Uh, wherever I was at, some club for the most part, you know, going out partying and, and just not caring anymore. You know, I, I just didn't care. Um, I couldn't adapt to civilian life. I couldn't adapt to um, working a nine to five, even though I worked for four years and I did uh, several miscellaneous things while I was in the Marine Corps. But um, being back in the civilian world was a culture shock for me. Um, I took that title of being a Marine really serious. Um, I had to work my ass off to uh, earn that title too. Uh, I went through a lot in Marine Corps boot camp. Um, that was that was definitely the hardest uh, experience that I've had in my 54 years of life. I'm, I'm, I'm 54 now, um, so uh, I have no problem telling people how, my age. Um, but anyway. Uh, I went through all that and I, I still was able to get up and go to work and, you know, go to my school classes and by the grace of God, I barely, I just skated through college. You know, I'm not even going to lie to y'all. I, I skated through college because I, I, I did just enough to graduate uh, and you know, I, I just didn't I just didn't really care. You know, I, 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 my mind, my frame of thought, <clears throat> uh, being being a, a, a 21, 22 year old old guy, you know, I, I just I just I didn't know what was going on with me, first off. And two, I didn't care. You know, I, I, I had a death wish. Now I can say that that I, I actually had a death wish. And um I was just 
behaving badly and um, not caring. Uh, and I, I think that God must have, uh, he must have kept me protected because I think he knew that my purpose for being here was bigger and broader than the vision that I have for myself. Um, so I stand before you all, you know, humble and thankful that he has guided my hand to this point, even when I didn't see it. Because I'm telling y'all, when, when I started drinking, I couldn't stop. When, when I drank, I drank till I blacked out because I didn't want to remember nothing and I, I sure as hell didn't want to go through these nightmares anymore. So uh, I did what I had to do, what I thought I had to do. And um, uh, I'm just thankful that I'm still here to tell this story, right? So I was too ashamed to get help. So, you know, I, I spoke to a few people, you know, family, a few friends, and uh, you know, you know, you know how it is when you talk to that, you know, that family member who, you know, and they'll just give you that pat on the shoulder. Well, everything's gonna be okay, man. Everything's gonna be all right, Mark. You know, just, just buckle down, man. Buckle down. You know, um, you you'll get over it. You'll get over it. Um, so, I tried to buckle over it and, and, and get over it, but the nightmares continued. Um, the lack of sleep continued. Uh, you know, my mood swings continued. You know. Um, for some people, I wasn't very pleasant to be around because my frame of thinking was just not right. Um, and I say that to say this to you guys. It is okay to admit that you are dealing with something that's beyond your control. If you are dealing with mental health issues that you cannot control yourself it is okay to reach out and seek help it is okay to reach out and seek help because we need you guys alive we need you guys to stay healthy and we need you guys to you know be there for your loved ones i i can i can also say this if it wasn't for the birth of my daughter, I, I think that my life would be a little different and not for the good. Because when my daughter was born, she's an adult now, but when she was born, having her with me, it, it turned on a switch in my mind to keep going. Keep going for her, right? Because my daughter's going to look up to me for guidance, for love, for advice, whatever, right? And even in, even when my daughter was just a baby at that time, you know, my mind still wasn't where it needed to be. I was still out there, you know, doing dumb stuff, making crazy decisions. But when I looked at her, it made me think twice about doing some things. I, I was far from perfect, but having her in my life, it deterred me from doing all the crazy things that I wanted to do. So in essence, having my daughter saved my life. This, this is how I feel. If it wasn't for my daughter being in my life at that time in my life, I don't know if I would be here talking to you all today. So I kept moving forward, 
little, you know, little bit by little bit, one step at a time. I had to do what I had to do in order to better myself to be a better father for my daughter. So fast forward a little bit. I have more children <clears throat> and um, I'm working at uh, I'm working at, at a jail because at this point I finished school and I became a corrections officer. So I'm still going through my mess, still going through the nightmares, you know, still isolating from people from time to time. Um, I wasn't drinking as heavy, but I'm still drinking, you know. I was still drinking heavy. Let me let me paraphrase. Let me say it again. I was drinking heavy, but not as heavy, if that makes sense. Uh, a coworker of mine, he was also military. He put me off to the side one day, and he gave me this pamphlet. The pamphlet was about PTSD, and he asked me to look over this pamphlet and there's going to be some symptoms of PTSD on this pamphlet. He told me to look it over, see how many symptoms you're going through and talk to me tomorrow. I said, okay. So I looked over the pamphlet. I looked at the symptoms and it was about it was about 10, 12 maybe symptoms. I checked off about eight or nine of those symptoms that I was going through. And and that's that's at least. I I, I checked quite a bit. So the next day I see my man and I told him, you know how many I checked off and he was like, Hey bro, I'm, I'm a, you know, I'm talking to you man to man, you know, you need to go to the VA hospital and, and get help because, you know, we, we need, we need, we need to be safe, not just for ourselves, but for our families. And I said, you know, and here I go, you know, I was in, I was in denial. I was in denial y'all. Oh, I'm good. I'm good. I'm okay. I'm okay. You know what I'm saying? I'm like, you know, I've been through all this stuff, but you know, I'm all right now. I'm all right. No big deal. And he said, man, he, and he, he was, he was humble when he, when he spoke to me and he said, bro, get help. I'm telling you this man to man, because I had to do it. I had to admit that I was dealing with some things that was, that was beyond my control. I said, okay, man, I'll think about it. I'll think about it. And I did. I thought about it. And maybe a week later, I spoke to him and I said, man, I thought I had to think about, you know, our conversation. And I thank you for coming to me, you know, in confidence, you know, one-to-one -one and having that conversation with me. Because it really made me understand that I, w I am dealing with some things that is beyond my control. And I had to think back also that once upon a time, <clears throat> I didn't want to be here. I didn't want to live anymore. You know, I thought about death. I thought about taking my life. And I need to have those issues addressed. I couldn't depend on the bottle to help me with my problems. I couldn't depend on that anymore. So, and this was around 2013. This was around 2013 uh, when me and my guy had this conversation. <clears throat> so I took, I took the steps. I went to the VA hospital and I spoke to some people there uh, social workers, I think, I think they were social workers. And I told them my scenario and, um, they referred me to 
some people um, and uh, they referred me to come back and talk to them a little bit further and I did that and I have to say that making that decision to um, reach out and get help it saved my life um, you know now I am in a position where uh, where I can do this I am in a position where I can speak out on this particular topic because I live it I, I've been I've been down that dark road you know where life just didn't seem fun anymore I've been down that road where I turned my back on everybody including myself I've turned my back on life and if it wasn't for people like him, you know, I'm not going to say his name, but if it wasn't for my ex coworker at that time, you know, I don't know if I would, I, I don't know, I don't know what would happen to me. I really don't know, but I'm here. I'm here now. And I'm speaking out about it now. And I also want to share this message with all of you that take the time to listen to me to understand that it's okay to not be okay. It is okay to not be okay. What's not okay is for you to not do something about your current situation if you are dealing with some things some mental health issues and you are not getting the proper care that you need you are not doing yourself a proper service you are doing a disservice to yourself and to your family that you should be taking care of your mental health people are so caught up on physical health you know which is important because we need to stay healthy physically but we tend to overlook the mental side of things we tend to overlook the importance of taking steps to make sure that our mental health is in check we need to do more with that I know there's organizations out there that help people, you know, but we need people to be out there talking about it. And this is where I come in. You see, like I said earlier, I've been that guy. I was I was that guy that was in denial. <clears throat> I was that guy who self-medicated. I was that guy that bold faced lied to people. When people asked me, man, are you okay? And I said, yeah, I'm good, I'm good. <clears throat> but deep down in my heart, I wasn't good. I wasn't good at all. I was not good at all. And I'm here now to let people know to start speaking up and speaking out about how you are feeling. Speaking of that, speaking of that, of, of how you're feeling, how are y'all feeling today? How are, how are you guys doing? I want to do a quick wellness check, man. I want, to, I want you guys to, to give me a thumbs up. Give me a thumbs up if you guys are doing good. If you guys are not doing good, give me a thumbs down. Send me a message. Let me know how you're doing. If you guys need to talk about it. I'm, I'll, I'll make myself available to talk because in my heart, I think that this is what needs to be done. We need people to start speaking up and speaking out on this particular topic because we cannot sweep our mental health under the rug like things are going to get better by magically, by waving that magic wand and thinking that things are going to get better, hopefully. 
it's not going to happen. The only way that it will get better is if you decide to make that step and make the changes to get better. We have to get out of our pride, ladies and gentlemen. Step out of that because our pride is going to keep us down in the, in the dirt. Stop, stop with this. Our pride is going to get ourselves killed. We need to get out of that. Start admitting to ourselves that we may actually need to reach out and get some help. Because if we don't, it's only going to make matters worse for us. But how are you guys doing today? I would love to know how you guys are doing. Me, I'm doing okay. I'm doing okay. I am in a hotel right now. Um, I just uh, came from a, a job orientation. So uh, <clears throat> uh, I'm, I'm up north. Uh from Milwaukee, Wisconsin right now. I am in Green Bay, to be exact. I am in Green Bay, Wisconsin right now, and I'm going through a uh, job orientation, which uh, required me to drive an hour and a half up to Green Bay. <clears throat> so I will be here today and tomorrow, and I will drive back to Milwaukee Thursday. So I wanted to take this time to do a wellness check with you guys and to share a little bit about my story to give some context about this particular page that I've created. <clears throat> um, as you know, if you didn't know, the month of November is considered Mental Health Awareness Month. So what a great time in the year for me to do this. What a great time of the year it is to begin my journey in doing this podcast in the month of November. Mm. Yep. So God must be moving as he always is. But anyway, I digress. <clears throat> Let me get back into this for a, a, a couple of more minutes. My goal here is to uh, not only promote uh, mental health awareness, I want to bring people on this podcast and uh, have them share their stories about their struggles with mental health. Uh, I will also be uh, reaching out to veterans and speaking uh, with them and have them share their stories because this is a message that I believe in my heart. This, this message needs to go out into the world. <clears throat> it needs to be expressed and it needs to be heard. And I said it before, and I'll keep saying it as many times as I have to. It is okay to not be okay. But what's not okay is if you don't do something about your issues. If you want to get better, the first thing you need to do is act. Act on that feeling act on that desire to change because I'm going to tell you something nobody's going to really help you you are going to have to make some decisions in your life to warrant positive change people may come you're in your path to speak on certain things that you may need to work on 
And that's cool. But you are going to have to make that decision to act. It's all up to you. Either you're going to act on it or do nothing. I am imploring you to act on it. We cannot sit idly by and just let our lives go to waste. We cannot afford the luxury <clears throat> of letting life pass us by and one day we'll wake up just regretting life and regretting the fact that, oh, I should have done this sooner. I should have made changes sooner. Now look at where my life is. You know, I, I don't want you guys to be in that position. Do not put yourselves in that position. Start acting now. I don't give a damn what people may say about me and you shouldn't give a damn about what people say about you your mental health is your mental health your journey to bettering your life has nothing to do about how other people may feel about you if you have people in your circle that mean you no good and do not help you in your journey to be a better person, you need to remove that person out of your life or people, period. End of sentence. End of sentence. If people are involved in your life are not doing anything constructively to help you build upon what you have cut them loose cut them loose like the old saying goes you can do bad by your own self why you need somebody else to help you to be bad <laughs> it don't make sense it don't make sense ladies and gentlemen so This is this is episode number one for me. You will be seeing me more often. I will be speaking out on this particular issue more often. I will be bringing people on and having them again speak on their life experiences with mental health and how it affected them. And I will also have them talk about the things that they have done to better themselves. This is the first episode of many. I want to use this platform to share to others that you are not alone in your struggle. You are not alone in your struggle. I want everybody to know that that's dealing with uh, mental health issues that if you guys want to talk, you can use this platform as a safe space to speak and speak out about the things that are troubling you. If you need to use this platform to uh, just to speak to me I'm cool with that I'm cool with that and give me a thumbs up guys uh, give me a thumbs up uh, if you guys are doing alright give me a thumbs up uh, let me know how you guys are doing right if you guys want to reach out and talk to me my email is speak your truth pc at gmail.com it's all one word speak your truth pc at gmail.com if you guys want to reach me on facebook you can do that 
I got a, a Facebook page called Speak Your Truth with Mark Ross. Go on there. Reach out to me. So, with that being said, I'm going to sign off right now. And I will uh, talk with you guys soon. Again, look forward to seeing this face more often. Because the goal for me is to be seen and heard. I want this message to go out. That we are going to be talking about certain things. Our mental health cannot be avoided. We cannot afford to keep our uh, feelings and our uh, struggles swept under the rug. I want people to have the courage to stand up and speak out on what it is that they're going through. And I would love to have you guys come to my platform and talk to, and talk with me about it. <clears throat> and we can talk about ways that we can help each other. If you guys know of any resources that can help people, please uh, feel free to share. Feel free to share anything that could help others stay alive for one more day. That's the goal for me. I want people to stay alive. And I want people to get healthier uh, in terms of their mental health. But anyway, let me get up out of here, guys. It's been uh, a good experience uh, talking here and, and, and getting my uh, speaking up on who, who it is that I am and what it is that I'm trying to accomplish here. So uh, if you guys can help with this process, that would be great. Uh, again, like and subscribe to this page and be looking out for more content. You guys have a good one. Take care.